Hi, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my talk. My name is Juan Perdomo, and I'm a graduate student at the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, today, I'll be telling you about some joint work together with Michael Kim, who's also at Berkeley, regarding this idea of making decisions under outcome performativity. So the motivating observation behind our work is that social predictions are often performative. So social predictions, what I mean by that are predictions about people, and they're performative in the sense that these predictions don't just forecast the future, but they can actively shape what data we observe um, and how outcomes will manifest. So in particular, consider this problem of trying to predict whether individual high school students will graduate um, from high school on time. So these predictions are performative and can actually impact the outcome that is being predicted on time graduation because the predictions are used to inform school decisions as to which students will receive an intervention and are likely to receive attention from school counselors and the such and can, and can hence impact the likelihood that individual students will graduate from high school on time. Um, so the observation that I'd like to point out here is that given that predictions are actively shaping the data that we observe, what should the goals of prediction even be? Um, on the one hand, we might think that prediction is really about forecasting. A good predictor should provide an accurate answer to the question of which students will graduate from school on time. On the other hand, we might think that given that predictions are impacting the outcome that we care about, um, maybe we should dispel this idea that predictions are about forecasting at all. We should think about predictions are maybe just a, the goal of a predictor is to steer the data distribution towards a more desirable target value. Say, find me a predictor which induces more graduates. Um, and the thing I'd like to kind of summarize is that the right objective is often ambiguous. Right? This ambiguity is something that's here to stay. It's not, it's not clear that it can be resolved a priori. And it's something that's inherent to these prediction, social prediction problems that have what I call these performative effects. So the question that we seek to answer in this paper is what should we do about it? So our contribution is that we design learning algorithms and solution concepts that embrace this ambiguity in performative prediction. In particular, we find algorithms which achieve this notion of performative omniprediction. These are simple predictive models that are optimal for a wide variety of different contrasting, con uh, contradictory objectives um, and satisfy this uh, notion of optimality even when predictions are performative. So we'll spend the rest of the talk kind of delving into this definition and providing some background uh, and talking about the lear different learning algorithms that achieve this. So before doing that, I'd like to pause to provide a bit of an intellectual history behind this project. So our work sits at the intersection of two different, um, very exciting recent lines of work. So one is this idea of performative prediction and performative prediction is a uh, line of work that I've been involved with that formalizes this causal impact of prediction. So it's, it, it's a way of formalizing this idea that predictions can actually impact the data that is being observed. And the second line of work is um, even more recent is the idea of omnipredictors which has roots in the algorithmic fairness literature and connections to multi-calibration and outcome distinguishability. And it's a really exciting line of work that provides new perspectives and tools for supervised learning. Um, if you find the ideas in this talk interesting, I hope you'll go and delve into some of the references that I listed here that outline some of the major results in these areas. Um, so today I'll talk about how using ideas from these two different um, research directions, we can try to provide an answer to this notion, this, this question of how do we address ambiguity uh, of the goals of prediction in performative settings. So the talk will be structured in three parts, roughly. So I'll start by discussing this idea of outcome performativity and provide some background on performative prediction. Then I'll provide an overview of the solution of concept, performative omniprediction. And at the end, I'll talk about algorithms of how do we actually achieve the solution concept. So starting with the background on performative prediction, um, start by discussing what I call the outcome performativity thesis. So like in this education example that I discussed previously, I want to formalize this idea that predictions can actively shape data distributions. So in outcome performativity, we imagine the following data generating process 
where we sample features X, say student information, student demographic, demographic information, and this is sampled from a static distribution D. On the basis of these features, we then make a prediction Y prime according to some decision rule at H. Uh, after having made a prediction, we then observe some future outcome Y star. And here, for simplicity, I've described, simplicity, I've described this outcome variable Y star as being a Bernoulli random variable. The thing I'd like to highlight is that the conditional distribution of this Bernoulli random variable is depends on the prediction itself. It depends on Y prime and not just X. So think about P star of X and Y prime as a number in zero one. Um, so throughout the rest of the talk, I'll make use of this shorthand notation. So I'll say that X and Y star are sampled from the distribution of H, uh, D of H, um, a shorthand for this um, data generating procedure. And then I'll say that P star, P star is generally refers to a function from features and predictions to the unit interval. So this is like the parameter of the Bernoulli distribution. Um, so given this setup, um, so I should mention that outcome performativity is a special case of performative prediction. So here, only the outcome is being influenced by the choice of prediction, but in general, the decision rule H can impact the joint distribution over features and outcomes. So in, ge in full generality and formativity, we allow for the marginal distribution over X to also change, but we're ruling that out in this case. Um, so with this in mind, I'll talk a little bit more about the framework. And um, so in, in performative prediction, much like in supervised learning, where the value of a prediction rule is measured by the expected value of that prediction rule as measured by some loss function over a fixed distribution D, because predictions can impact the data distribution and each decision rule H can induce a particular, a distinct distribution over pairs X, Y, in performative prediction, we measure the value of a prediction rule according to its performative risk, which is the natural extension. So in particular, the performative risk of a decision rule H on a particular loss function here at loss is the expected value of this loss function over the distribution dH that the decision rule H induces. Um, analogously, we say that a decision rule H star is performatively optimal if it minimizes this quantity with regards to some set capital H of decision rules. So that's sort of the background. And now we'll move on to discussing this idea of performative omni prediction and how it addresses this question of um, the ambiguity uh, and the various goals of pr prediction in performative settings. So prior work in performative prediction had assumed that this, uh, at the time of learning, the debate as to what the goals of prediction had already re been resolved. And that a particular loss function had been chosen um, when we start doing optimization. The issue, of course, is that specifying a single correct objective can be very challenging, especially without having seen how our predictions can impact the data. If we decide that the goals of prediction are wrong, uh, previously we would just need to retrain, change the loss function and retrain. And it's not like we can pick just one loss function that accurately captures the whole spectrum of possible objectives. Right, different objectives, say, uh, steering towards one objective or uh, one target or forecasting can have very different decision rules. So the performatively optimal decision for one loss um, function can be very different from the performatively optimal decision rule for a different loss function. So the solution we think we propose in this work is to avoid choosing one loss function at all. Instead, we're going to learn a single model that given a loss, we can easily modify so that it is optimal for that loss, even if these predictions are performative. So this notion of one model that's optimal for many different objectives that can be tweaked to be optimal for many different objectives is known as omni-prediction, something that was introduced in the supervised learning world by Gopalan, Kalai, Reingold, Sharon, and Reeder uh, at ITCS last year. So in particular, an omni-predictor is a regression function P in, in the supervised learning case. It's a regression function P, which maps features X to the unit interval. 
Here I'm thinking about the case where outcomes are binary. And it's defined in terms of three parameters, a set of loss function L, set of loss functions L, a set of decision rules H, and an approximation parameter. And the key property of an omnipredictor is that for every loss function in L, there exists a simple function, a post-processing of the loss and the predictor P, such that the post-processing approximately minimizes the expected loss uh, up to some small approximation parameter. So the thing I wanna highlight in this definition is that um, this idea of a post-processing is the key, maybe the key innovation of omniprediction. It says that if you give me a loss, I can tweak my predictor P, I can modify it so that it makes predictions which are approximately optimal for that loss. And because we're in the supervised learning case, here the expectation is taken with respect to a fixed distribution D. So in our work, we take this definition we, which had uh, been previously proposed for supervised learning, and we extend it to the more challenging case where the prediction rule itself can change the data distribution. So now we're thinking about performative prediction. Uh, and the definition is very similar, um, except that the regression function P now takes not just a feature X, it also takes a prediction Y prime, and again, mapped it to the unit interval. And it is an LH epsilon performative omni predictor. Again, if for every loss function in the set capital L, there exists a simple function, this post-processing, such that the performative risk of the post-processing is approximately optimal. So it approximately minimizes the performance risk with regard to some baseline set of comparators, uh, capital H. Um, and here, be, I'm restating the definition of the performative risk and highlighting how um, performativity comes in because the, the decision rule H is impacting this data distribution, right? And we're saying that the omni predictor um, is still optimum, even under, even if it changes the data. So even in supervised learning, it's not obvious that this this definition can be even it can be achieved. Um, and Gopal and al prove that such a thing exists by establishing a connection to multi-calibration. Um, in our work, we show how these omni predictors exist in the performative setting. And in fact, they're not much harder to achieve than in the supervised learning case. So given that this is sort of a new definition that many of you, I'm guessing, may not be aware of, I'll like to spend some time kind of contextualizing it and saying, and trying to provide some background on how I think that this definition addresses this uh, overarching question of having to deal with many contradictory objectives in, super, uh, in performative prediction and the distinction between steering and forecasting. So an omnipredictor in short is one predictor that is simultaneously optimal for a large number of loss functions. And it's optimal in a per loss function sense. And in the definition, the set of losses capital L, there needs to, there's no relationship between these different losses. These losses can be completely arbitrary. Um, they can encode things like steering, they can encode forecasting, they can steer towards different targets, different loss functions steer toward different targets. They don't need to be related in any way. So in short, they can encode contradictory goals. Um, so omni prediction is really a way of achieving flexibility. It says, I'm going to front load all the learning and sort of encode all the things I could possibly learn um, given this menu of different loss functions that I want to be optimal with respect to. And then at some point later in the future, I can do this post-processing and have the guarantee that the post-processing of my Omni predictor is approximately optimal for that loss. Um, so in particular, if we learn that uh, performative effects uh, shape a data distribution in a one way, and that changes what we think the goals of prediction should be, we can simply modify the omni predictor so that it optim uh, outputs predictions that are optimal for a different loss function. Uh, we don't need to retrain. So I spent some time saying what omni prediction is. I'd also like to spend some time saying what omni prediction is not. 
It is not a robust optimization objective. It is not solving a min-max problem. Uh, in particular for this, if different loss functions can encode very contradictory objectives, then the optimal min-max solution might be to just split the difference. And we end up with predictors that don't, op don't output very interesting predictions. So in particular, these robust optimization objectives can be very weak if losses uh, encode very different objectives. So as I mentioned previously, the key innovation behind Omni prediction is this idea of a post-processing. So I'd like to spend a little bit of time making that more concrete. Uh, and to do so, I'd like to talk about maybe the simplest setting and what about what how and illustrate how this um, post-processing might look like. So in particular, in supervised learning, if the outcome variable y is a newly random variable with parameter p of x, um, what is the post-processing? So maybe you'd like to pause the video at this point and take a second to stare at it. But for something like the squared loss, if I know this function p, right? So the post-processing is done on the basis, it knows what the loss function is. It also knows what the parameter p is. For the squared loss, the optimal post-processing is just the identity, right? It's just the conditional mean. Um, and abstracting away from this particular example, the observation I'd like to make is that in supervised learning, if the regression p function p star is the truth, in the sense that y star is a Bernoulli random variable with parameter p star of x for every x, then p star is an omni predictor for every set of loss functions l and set of decision rules h and uh, tolerance parameter epsilon. Because this post processing, where we just compute the pointwise minimizer of the conditional expectation, it's the pointwise minimizer, right? So then it will be optimal no matter um, what the distribution on X is or what the set of decision rules in H are. And this same idea holds in performative prediction. So in particular, in performative prediction, we extend this idea of this post-processing and it works the same way. So given a regression function P, which now takes in a, a prediction Y prime and again outputs a number in zero one, the post-processing is just this pointwise minimizer. And in particular, if the set of predictions Y prime is finite, the argmin is just a, can, can be computed by enumeration, right? We're just taking the minimum value of size of Y prime many terms. And here I've used the shorthand that what Y sampled from P X Y prime really means that Y sample is a Bernoulli random variable with this parameter. Good. So the first theorem we prove is that for any set of loss functions L and decision rules H, there always exists a predictor P that is an LH epsilon performative omni predictor. Furthermore, the complexity of P depends only on the complexity of the functions in L and H and this approximation parameter epsilon. So in particular, if the loss functions in L and the decision rules in H can be computed by circuits of size S, then the complex, there always exists a omni predictor P of size polynomial in S and one over epsilon. In particular, the circuit size, the complexity of P is completely independent of nature. So, nature's regression function p star can be arbitrarily complicated for our, our omni predictor there always exists a simple omni predictor that achieves this definition so that's we'll now move on to the third part of the talk regarding algorithms and how we actually achieve uh, this definition so to do this we leverage an argument put forth by Gopalan, Hu, Kim, Ryan, Gold, and Weider, which is also appearing at this ITCS. So I encourage you to go check out their paper. And they establish this very interesting connection between omni prediction and loss minimization and indistinguishability uh, and out outcome indistinguishability. The idea is that if we can build a model P, so a, a predictor, a regression function that looks like nature's P star, this is like the truth, the true conditional distribution of outcomes, from the perspective of the set of efficient tests, then P really is as good as P star for omni predictor, uh, for the sake of omni prediction. So if you remember from a few slides back, I mentioned that if P star is the truth, 
then P star is an omni predictor. And by establishing this connection to indistinguishability, uh, it gives us a very concrete way of achieving omni prediction, right? We just need to achieve this indistinguishability condition. Um, so I'll spend a little bit more time making that concrete. So in particular, the definition that we propose is the idea of performatively outcome indistinguishable predictors. So performatively outcome indistinguishable is a property of a predictor P. Um, and it's defined in terms of a set of decision rules H and a set of losses L and an approximation parameter epsilon. And it says that a predictor P is an LH epsilon performatively outcome indistinguishable if for every H in the set capital H and loss function in L, the performative risk in which outcomes are sampled according to P is a is very is a epsilon close in absolute distance um, to the performative risk in which outcomes are sampled according to nature up to this parameter epsilon. So the intuition is that each pair of loss function and decision rule H defines a distinguisher or test function. And if we fool all these distinguishers or test functions, then this predictor P is an omni predictor. So more formally, for any set of losses L and decision rules H, if a predictor P is an L H prime epsilon performatively outcome indistinguishable, then P is an omni predictor for the class H. And here there's an H prime, right? So we're, we need to slightly augment the set of decision rules for which we're satisfied the indistinguishability condition. So in particular, we're, we ask that we're indistinguishable not just when we predict according to H, but when we include the post-processings of P as decision rules, okay? So it says, our model remains indistinguishable from nature, even if we act according to it. In terms of the algorithm to, um, so in terms of the algorithm to achieve this indistinguishability, um, it, um, it leverages arguments put forth in the multi-calibration and OI literature, and it's this kind of like boosting iterative um, algorithm. So it starts by, we start by initializing some prediction function from X and Y prime to the unit interval arbitrarily. And it proceeds in a series of rounds. At each round, we try to find a test function. And as I mentioned previously, each test function is defined in terms of a pair of decision rule H and loss function L for which our current model is not indistinguishable from nature. Uh, if none exists, then we just terminate because we, by definition, satisfied the indistinguishability condition that we set out to achieve. If not, then we update our predictor P on the basis of the uh, test function H and L that exhibits a difference. Uh, and much like these boosting algorithms, the key idea is that this boosting step um, makes common progress progress on some common potential function. So the total number of iterations is bounded, assuming that we can solve this fine step. And as I mentioned previously, um, the key idea of our work is that we show that this notion of omni prediction in this more, what looks like a more complicated setting where predictions can change the data distribution is in fact not much harder than omni prediction in the supervised learning case. We show that omni, um, that this auditing step of finding a test function that exhibits some difference can be reduced to a supervised learning problem. In particular, it reduces to cost-sensitive classification. So from a computational perspective, this problem achieving performative omniprediction is no harder than supervised learning. So the theorem that we prove regarding this algorithm is that assuming it makes two assumptions. The first one is statistical in nature, and it says that we have access to a data set in which predictions are randomized. Um, this is necessary. This some kind of exploratory condition is necessary because we need to know how outcomes behave under different choices of prediction. So here, I'm just stating this result for a set for a finite set of predictions. So think about y prime as say zero or one, a set of zero or one. And the second assumption we make is that decision rules H are learnable. So we can solve things like cost-sensitive classification over the set H. 
um, the guarantee is that this indistinguishability algorithm that I stated previously on the previous slide then is statistically and computationally efficient. It returns a predictor P, which is out, uh, performatively outcome indistinguishable using only polynomially many samples and all the relevant problem parameters and um, only in only polynomially many iterations. Good. So with that, I'd like to sort of, um, yeah, and the, the key takeaway is that omniprediction and performative prediction ends up being not much harder than in supervised learning. So summing up, we started with this observation that social predictions are performative and can don't just forecast the future, they can actively shape it. And performativity means that accuracy is not the only goal. There's this, this, there's this high level distinction between forecasting and steering and this inherent ambiguity as to what the goals of prediction should be. And in this paper or in this work, we provide one way of addressing this distinction uh, by leveraging this con concept of omniprediction. And in a sense, omniprediction provides flexibility to choose optimal decision rules from a menu, but it doesn't really tell us which objective to pick. So this problem of discerning which loss function to choose is something that uh, I think very much remains open, and I hope uh, some of you might be inspired to work on in the future. Thank you so much for paying attention, um, and hope to see you at ATCS.